Hey, I'm Jonathan Wild, and we are going to cover how to use first in, first out for inventory costing under a periodic inventory system. The first in, first out, or FIFO inventory method assumes that the earliest inventory items purchased are the first to be sold. For example, let's say a company bought three identical units of inventory, one unit on June 2nd for $10, one unit on the 4th for $11, and one unit on the 25th for $15. On June 28th, we sold one unit for $21. Using FIFO, the first unit purchased, which was on June 2nd for $10, is reported as cost of goods sold on the income statement. The other two remaining units for $11 and $15 get reported in inventory on the balance sheet. As you can see, under FIFO, the earliest unit purchased is sent to cost of goods sold on the income statement first. The FIFO method can only be used when our inventory consists of identical units. For example, if we are selling identical gallons of milk, we could use the FIFO method. However, if we are selling one-of-a-kind custom artwork, we would not use FIFO. Okay, let's do an example. Assume our records show that on May 1st, we had 20 units in inventory that had cost $30 each. On May 3rd, we purchased 30 units of inventory for $35 each. And on May 11th, we purchased five units for $45 each. And on May 28th, we purchased 10 units for $48 each. We take that information and fill it into goods available for sale column. Next, we need to determine our cost of goods sold. Looking at our sales data, we see that 60 units have been sold. And using first in, first out, or FIFO, we assume the earliest inventory items are the first to be sold. Therefore, we start with the first units purchased. That means 20 units from May 1st, 30 units from May 3rd, five units from May 11th, and five units from May 28th. We stop at five units on May 28th because we have now reached our 60 units sold. When we add each of these amounts, we get a cost of goods sold of 2,115. This amount is the cost of inventory sold during this month and will be reported on the income statement. Last, we need to determine ending inventory. This is computed as goods available for sale minus cost of goods sold. So first, we see that of the 20 units available for sale from May 1st, all 20 are now sold. Of the 30 units from May 3rd, all 30 are also now sold. Looking at the five units from May 11th, we see that all five have been sold. And looking at the 10 units from May 28th, we see that five units have been sold. So we have five units left. As a result, we have a total of five units remaining in ending inventory with a cost of $240. And total ending inventory is reported on the balance sheet.